Hello and welcome to episode 92 of the Mouse's Makes Knitting podcast. My name is Mandy, sometimes known as Mouse. This is Miss Poppy, my co-host. Yes. Who's in a very good mood because I've opened the blind. She's actually purring, but the mic won't pick it up, I know, from previous experience. So, I don't seem to have much to show you this week. I don't really know why. I've been knitting constantly. Um, I just don't seem to have got anywhere. So, I'm going to show you what I have got. Um, and I've been, I've been treating myself as well. I also spent my wool warehouse voucher. But I'm not going to show you what I spent it on just yet. So, I'm going to begin actually with a reminder. Um, the members only Zoom is tomorrow at 8pm BST. Um, if you are a member on Ko-fi and I haven't sent you the ID and the password, please message me and I'll get that out to you. I'm pretty sure I've got everybody, but just in case. Um, the other thing I want to remind everybody is that on Saturday, which is the 1st of April, the first week of the Advent and the first week of the sock sets will come down and the second weeks of each will be going up. I think that's all I had to tell you. Yes. Okay. I'm going to begin actually the knitting part with a confession. Some of you are not going to like this at all. Last week on the podcast, in the comments, somebody said that they would like a rundown of my shelf of shame because it's been a while. I am going to do that, but I'm going to do it as a separate video. Um, but I went and I, I did a bit of an audit of the shelf of shame and I'm afraid four projects did not make the cut. There were two pairs of socks that I just don't want to finish anymore. There are still three pairs on the shelf, not counting the socks that I'm knitting for March's um, year of the sock. I also pulled down both my Advent, not Advent, Aurora Cabin shawls. Um, the first one you knew was done. The second one, I just haven't been working on it. And I'd watched Tina from Simply and Stitches and she had finished hers early. And it was still huge, really huge. And she washed it and blocked it. And I realised once I saw hers, what it was about it that was bothering me. And I didn't like the fact that the, the cabled section was thick and so there was no drape to it. So I mostly wear my shawls. Let me see if I can grab one. These are all sat here because I haven't taken proper photographs of them yet. I mostly wear mine like this. And you can't do that with the Aurora Cabin. It's too thick and chunky and it won't squash up. Tina, I'm sure she won't mind me saying, you've probably seen anyway. Tina tried it and it just sits like this like a big solid thing um, and that's not really what I'm looking for in a shawl so I pulled them both down the first one the blue one it took me two hours to pull down that's how far into it I was when I gave up on it the second one was considerably quicker I have saved all the yarn from both and I will make something with those colour palettes at a future date. Got a couple of ideas, we'll see. And I also pulled down the flying foxtail wrap. Sat down to work on it, I looked at it. To begin with I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to be doing which is worrying because I've knit brioche before and enjoyed it 
and then I had the brioche accident on this and it seems to have broken my brain for working with brioche I couldn't I just couldn't do it and I worked a few rows and I was losing a stitch every row <coughs> excuse me and I thought that there's no point I'm not enjoying it I just pulled it down I've got a bit of a sore throat so I apologize if I have to keep having a drink I hate doing it if I have time I will pause before I drink so that was four things gone but that then freed up some space some knitting space and some brain space for some new projects. So, I cast on something new. I cast on this. It's the Fragmentation Shawl by Stephen West. I showed you this when I bought it a few weeks ago and I showed you the colours that I'd put together to make it from and I've changed my mind I'll tell you more about that later but I've cast it on in entirely different colours actually let me show you let me show you what I've got so far this is what I've got so far it's very very different from the colours that I originally had which were all dark purples, blues, greens. Yeah. I'm in a bright spring mood at the moment. With the exception of one, they are once again all my own hand dyed. So I will show them to you. This section, actually, before I show you the yarns, this pink section I've got to pull down because... I think what I've done is at this end I've left I've done stitches for the eye cord border which I didn't need to do at this end only at this end this shawl if you're wondering isn't it in segments so this is the first segment uh, you knit so many repeats of your color sequence then you go up pick up the next stitches knit the next segment you can see that actually if I show you the pattern you can see that on the pattern so I'm not giving anything away. So the colours I chose were, let me start at the beginning. I nearly went, oh, it's a very fine place to start. Let's not do that with a sore throat. So this is March, the Year of Yarn March yarn. This is what's left over from what I put into my shortest day shawl that I'm using as kind of a catalogue of my year of yarn yarns for this year there's 80 grams the shawl says you need 90 i'm hoping i make it the next color is oh this one i don't know if you can see it terribly well again i've got the blind open and the top light on because it's so dreary this is after the rain which was um, one of the April colourways, I snagged one for myself because it's lovely blue and jade green. And as you can see, it's knit up as kind of a turquoisey colour. It's this one. Love that one. After that comes this one, which again is one of mine. It's just a lime green solid. Then what's next? This one. This one, I dyed up to go into the second Aurora cabin. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of a very, very pale peach with some orange and red speckles. This one is Peach Parfait. It's not yet in the shop. I am hoping to put some in in April. That's followed by this one which again I don't think you can make out but it's orange and red and it was a one of a kind I dyed up when I was playing 
I don't think I can replicate it because I was just playing. I wasn't making notes. You might just about, if I get it in the right angle, be able to see some of the stitches are pink, some are orange. So that's that one. The final colour is this one. And that's just an emerald green, again, that I dyed up. It's a solid colour. And you may be thinking, that's only six colours, and I know you need seven, because I've looked at the pattern. Well, the seventh colour is the one that's not mine. And it's this one. And this is what I based all the other colours on. So it's got pretty much every single of the other colours in there. And this is by the Wool Shed. And it's called Birthday Cake. I bought this two years ago, I think. I bought a birthday box for myself and this is the yarn that was in it. And whilst I loved it, the palette isn't really something that I wear. Um, so I just tucked it away because I knew that one day there'd be something I would do with it. And now there it is. So, yeah. That is really gorgeous. I don't know if it's still available. As I say, it was two years ago and it was a surprise. You ordered the box and that's what came. So that's my fragmentation shawl. Very, very different from what I had originally planned. I think you will agree. But I'm very happy with it. It's going to be bright and loud and well out of my comfort zone so yeah i'm looking forward to having that finished it's knitting up quite quickly because you never have very many stitches on the needle at one time even though i'm going down the stitch count is increasing um i've got two more colors to go and then i've finished the second repeat of colors and what i'm doing is when I've finished each repeat of seven colours, I'm sewing in the ends. So I'm kind of weaving them in as I go, but then I like to secure the ends, because I don't like messy ends, even on the back. So when I've finished these seven, I'll go in and I'll just sew in the ends that are left, as I have done with the first seven. So that, I think that's all there is to say about that. Whip-wise, mostly been working on one thing. It's living in this lovely bag that my friend Sarah made me. And I think you might know what it is. Let's get this out first. The rows on this are taking considerably longer now. This is the Islet Burst Shawl. If you're new here, I'm doing the Stephen West Marathon this year. So that's why you will see a lot of Stephen West patterns on this podcast. This, in fact, is the Starflake shawl. Um, again, a Stephen West pattern. This was a gift from my lovely friend Karen, who has the Recreational Knitting Podcast here on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. I will try and remember and put a link below. Ewan, my, my youngest son, picked out the colours for this shawl. Much to everybody's astonishment. And I can just about spread it out, I think, to show you. Hang on, let me detangle. This is going to be perfect for days like this. So, here we are so far. That little mark there is where I was when I showed it to you last week. So I had that much. Now I have all of this. And I've just started adding in the second colour. So, there's only, I think, four rows of the second colour. So I'm striping that in. Again, this one is mostly my own hand dyed. So there's the pink. I don't know why I'm showing you the ball. You've just seen all of it. And yet again, 
All I can see now is grey because the pink has broken my eyes. Oh dear. The pink is now fading into this one, which is the same pink. This one is variegated, lighter and darker. This is the lighter with a pale turquoise. Again, it's all my own hand dyed apart from one. Might have said that already. Then it will move into uh, this one, which is the Year of Yarn colourway for April. So it's just called April. So again, it's got the pinks and the turquoises with some lime greens and what have you. And then the final one is this colour which is a lot greener than it's showing there. That's making it quite dark. That's a bit better. And this is by my friend Amanda at Little Lycac. And this was a Christmas present from her. It's called For Mouse. And again, it's variegated. There's lighter and darker in there. So I'm really excited to get this finished. It's quite a simple pattern but it's getting slower because the stitch count is now so large. It's a common theme with Stephen West, as I'm sure you will know. Um, but yeah, I have knit on that quite a lot. I'm really enjoying it. And you know me, when I really love a pattern, there's going to be more than one. I'm risking my eyesight again here. So I strongly suspect that the minute I finish this one, I'm going to cast on another one in a different colourway. When Ewan and I were choosing the colours, um, we came up with these four and we also came up with another four and the other four is much more in my comfort zone. So I might do another one straight away in the other four. This one is very much a summery one. The other one is a bit more autumnal. So... I love this. I love this pink. I don't wear pink enough. My raincoat is, well, it's probably this pink, certainly not far off it. Um, because I don't want to get run over when it, it's dark and dingy. So no one's going to miss me wrapped in that, are they? And this will have a similar effect, I feel. So, yeah, that's the eyelet first shawl loving it very thoughtful gift <coughs> karen said um she saw it and she thought of me and she thought i would like it and she was not wrong i love it i've struggled actually i'm having to kind of um police myself and only allow myself to knit on it for so long because i would just knit on it till it's finished otherwise and leave everything else and then you'd be exceptionally bored. I'm going quite quickly today because my memory is full and I know I only have a limited amount of time before it cuts me off and I want to make sure I have a chance to tell you all the things that I've put aside to tell you. Okay, the next whip that I'm going to show you and I feel a little bit bad about this because I haven't done a huge amount on this either but that's because again the stitch count is enormous. This is the Advent Wrap by Hiris Makes that I am knitting with my Advent from Little Lycat Yarns from last year. I finished it on day 12, so the 12th of December I put it aside and I've done days 13 and 14 since I saw you last week, which is a bit bit of a poor show I need to try harder so really there's six rows I think eight rows so where I was before was just above these little flower uh, stitches am I showing you the back of the front that's the front so I've done from the flower stitch up doesn't look like much but it is long oh gosh Untangle. It is oh, wrong hand. It is very long, 
and there's two of them because I'm knitting them concurrently. So I do one side and then I do the other side. So when you look at it that way, there's a bit more knitting than it, it looks like there is. However, I will try and be a bit more productive with it this coming week so that next week I can show you something that's a little bit more impressive. Yeah, bad mat. That appears to be all the knitting I have to show you at the moment. Sorry. So I'm going to I'm going to move on to presents that I've bought myself. I told you buying those charity sock patterns would be a bad idea, didn't I? It did indeed open the floodgates. And I have bought some more patterns. I bought a few more patterns. Now the thing is this. I like knitting tees. I am somewhat infamous for knitting the rocket tee repeatedly. I've even knit the breezeway tee twice. And I have in this here box beside me, oh that was rattling, five lots of yarn put away with a view to knitting tees. All my own hand dyed. And I'm quite happy to knit the Rocket Tee and the Breezeway Tee because I like them and I like the way they fit and I've got the perfect size to fit me and everything all down pat. But every now and again I think to myself, you lot are going to get really bored. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So... I saw this on someone else's podcast. She was going through a list of teas for spring and I'm sorry, I cannot remember who it was. I watched several and I can't remember who this one was on. So this one is called the Seedling Tea and it's by Celine Phaeton. And I bought it and then realised it's actually a DK. But all is not lost because I have three skeins of yarn that would look very pretty with some, what's it called, Drops Alpaca Silk? Drops Kid Silk. It's a mohairy thing anyway. Mohairy thing knit with it so that that would make it a DK. So that's one of my lots of yarn accounted for. Then this one I had in my favourites. This is called, why do I do this to myself? The Sonnes, Sonnenstunden Tea. Apparently it means sunny days. And it's designed by Evgenia Dupili. I'm very, very sorry if that is really not how her name is pronounced I will show you and what I liked about this one I don't know if you can see it clearly enough is that there is a, a moss stitch panel along the raglan and also down the side of the tee and I really like the look of that one so I got that and I'm just checking that it is fingering weight I'm hoping it is because I can't actually see I'm sure it is I would have checked I'm sure I got it out of my fingering file that sounds bad doesn't it sort of thing the police come around and look for on your computer my fingering weight file on Ravelry in my favourites so I bought yarn for this but I bought it with my uh, Mother's Day present from Ewan, which was a wool warehouse voucher. I'll show you the yarn when it comes to knitting it. I'm probably going to cast it on fairly soon. But I really ought to finish this first. So you might get to see that next week. Then, oh, that 
evil genius, Stephen West, had a discount code for last week. And as I've already mentioned, and as most of you know, I am currently engaged in a Stephen West marathon. And I have lost two of my patterns because the Aurora Cabin and the Flying Foxtail Wrap have gone. So I needed to replace them with something else. Do you like all the justifications I can come up with? So I purchased this one. Again, I have the yarn for this. My plan is to do this, another autumnal shawl, because it's a big one. It's a big wrap yourself up in it one. I have got some that was yellow and orange that I over dyed. And so it's now, um, I over dyed it with black, but it's now tones of grey and gold and orange and green. So I was going to use that as the background colour and then where this one is black I was going to put orange what do you think it's very similar in style to the slip stravaganza which I loved so much and want to knit a million others of so I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy that and I know exactly what I want to knit it in and how I also bought the radiate shawl. I'll show you the picture on the back, that might be a little bit more. Gives you a better idea, I think. Now this one, I'm contemplating using the colours from my Aurora Cabin shawl in. Um, but I'm not sure, because they could also make quite a nice tea. So that one is undecided as yet. Then, where are we? I bought, this came from my favourites as well. This has been in my favourites for a while. Garter Abyss, which is knit in a very similar way to um, the Islet Burst shawl, but you get a different shape and at the moment, I'm all about the simple, easy garter stitch because my brain is struggling somewhat at the moment. I don't know why, um, but it's a five colour fade. So again, Aurora Cabin Shawl was five colours. So I could, again, do that with these, these with that, this with those, whatever. Then a new shawl came out, <laughs> um, which is very similar to the fragmentation. It's from the same book, the same series, and it's the Shifting Chevrons shawl. And this is what I'm going to use my original colours for the fragmentation for. I'll put them in here. I think they will look better <coughs> as a chevron. Hang on a minute. Sorry. I think they will look better as a chevron shawl. That's a closer up. I think they'll look better with that little bit of interest because they are very dark, um, very solid colours. So that I think will make a nice wintry shawl. Then... I saw this, my friend Alice, who is Soxy Nana Alice on YouTube. Most of you probably watch her as well. She made this just recently. And it was so lovely. I wanted one for myself. I don't have a plan for it at the moment. I may just do it scrappy and it may be really wild and wonderful colours. We'll see. And then, and you're going to think I'm a bit nuts now. I bought this one. Now I know I've just ditched the Aurora Cabin shawl, but this doesn't have to have drape. All the cabling section, which is the bit where you lose the drape, is on the yoke. So that's going to be fine. It also appears to have a wider neck. 
I did start making the honeycombs, so I'm painting honeycomb sweater. I think it was last year, might have been the year before. And it was really like round my neck and I wasn't so keen on that. But this one does seem to have a more loose uh, neckline. So I'm going to give this a go and I'm thinking at the moment, as we all know, plans change because I change my mind a lot because it is a woman's prerogative. Um, I'm thinking this would look really nice as a Christmas sweater. So with sort of reds and greens and whites, maybe the, the body in white and then reds and greens in the, the cabling, the pattern. What do you think? I can add it to the list of Christmas sweaters that I didn't knit last year, can't I? And not knit them this year either. Yeah, that's the plan. So, that is in fact all I've got to show you. I am quite tired. If this has been a bit low energy, I do apologise. We had friends round on Saturday um, who didn't leave till really late. So... I lost some sleep there and then Saturday night, Sunday morning, the clocks went forwards. Okay. People kept messaging me and saying, the clocks go forwards, not back. I do know that. It was just a slip of the tongue. I also told you that I'd been knitting something on a 120 metre cable. Nobody picked that one up though, did you? It happens with my brain sometimes. My mouth goes faster than my brain and the wrong stuff comes out. Did know they were going forwards. I know it's fall back, spring forwards. But the upshot of it was I lost another hour's sleep there. And last night I was so tired and I was so cold. I get cold and I don't know if this is a fibromyalgia thing or a kidney thing, but I cannot get warm. So I just had to go to bed at eight o'clock. And then at four o'clock this morning, the phone rang and the alarm company uh, told Dave that the shop that he manages, the alarm was going off. So he jumped on his motorbike and did a 50 mile round trip to find that some drunk had tried to sit on the two inch wide windowsill and had smashed the glass, the glass frontage on the shop again. Second time it's happened, but it's only the second time in 18 years, so that's not so bad. But the, the, he was back then at seven in the morning, then he had to get showered and dressed and go back to work. So I just, that was it. I was up from four o'clock. So I'm really tired. I've got a sore throat. Yeah. I may have been a bit low energy today. I apologise if I was. Anyway, I can see that I'm about to run out of time and I'll get cut off without saying goodbye. And I hate that hate it when that happens so i'm going to say thank you for joining me and i will see you next week bye guys <laughs>